Once the storing and casting was in place, the biggest decision that had to be made was where we were going to set ourselves up to, to realize this role. We looked at literally all over the world for locations. When you think of filmmaking, the people only think of Hollywood. The reality is that movies are being made all over the world because there are craftsmen and artisans and, uh, and artists in, in these amazing places. Belfast has a, a, a great setup, a thriving film industry here, and a lot of access to some really great crews, uh, really great talent, and Belfast uh, gave us a chance to really make a new planet. Belfast has been amazing in, in the range of environments and locations that we've been able to get to. A bunker, we had, we had an underground bunker we filmed in, which is a great location. We're uh, filming in, in a forge, we're filming in forests. The forest was really extraordinary. I thought it was like a unique spot. You couldn't tell where you were. There's something so amazingly beautiful about Northern Ireland and about Belfast. When you're going to places like Tollymore Forest, a sort of exotic, untouchable aspect to it that you don't see in just a normal forest. It's absolutely beautiful. Well, the Titanic Museum, it's a wonderful building. It's got great architecture. And you just need to look at it, and it has a, a shimmer feel off it. There's a marvelous wall of steel which we used outside to back the stalls and the marketplace of Cedra. The interiors are absolutely fantastic because of the escalators that are cutting through the building. Really looks like a futuristic city when the art directors have all set it up. We were building a story that required a certain look. We needed a world that looks scoured and scorched and oppressive but it also had to be beautiful and there were, there's only really a few places on earth that, that fit that criteria. We ended up in a place that one of Ridley Scott's other projects, Prometheus, made great use of, which is Iceland. Um, it has a huge variety of landscapes. It's got a very alien, kind of primal feel to it. It, it looks out of this world. It's, I, I, I can't fathom that this actually exists on this planet. Every day, is like the drive to work is stunning. It's sort of like when you see the Grand Canyon, you, you know, if you, if you see it in pictures, you're sort of like, wow, that's amazing. But if you see it in person, you're like, you, you, you're just speechless. And there's kind of beauty to it, but a dark beauty. And I think that's so fitting to what we're doing here because this turns into a very dark film. You know, the ring is a, a forerunner made structure, but it is also meant to represent a, a natural habitat. Um, it is not functioning properly. And so really having this unique uh, landscape uh, and being able to really infuse it with, with some unnatural behaviors uh, was really compelling for us. We've shot in interior caves, which, which look great, um, lava fields. We've shot the um, most amazing um, glacier locations. So what Iceland gave us was the huge landscapes that our characters could move across. There are movies that you do that is all green screen now, and you've got to pretend there are rocks about, but we actually have rocks, and uh, we have scenery that's breathtaking, and so you don't have to imagine. You can just play the scene, which is, is always nice. We've been, uh, well, some people would say we've been unlucky with the weather, but for photography-wise, we've been quite lucky with the weather. There hasn't been a lot of sun, although it's glorious now. Well, the first half in Belfast Rune Studio, so it was um, obviously contained and a lot easier. Out here, it's just one word, cold. <laughs> cold. As we're doing this interview, I'm trying to look as if I'm cool, calm and collected, but I'm absolutely freezing. Wind, rain, snow, we, we have it all here it, in one day. It's been a bit difficult. Um, some days I'm not dressed like this. I'm dressed in something that's a lot, a lot more, uh, I, I guess it's a uh, summer-like. You know, we have our actors pretending that it's uh, it's over 100 degrees and they're sweating. So we're spraying these guys down with fake sweat, which is cold, uh, and the temperature is dropping to, you know, 40 degrees. There were a couple of days where we just got completely soaked to the bone. Even the waterproof didn't work. We shot in a cave for one of our locations. And the cave, um, when I first stepped into it, I must say, I was a bit nervous. We thought it would be pretty, pretty, pretty dry in the cave. It turned out to be the opposite. It was, it was wetter inside the cave than it was out. Water's on the ground, water goes through the cave, water comes from the roof. I think everybody was very pleased to get out of the cave. Sergio likes to seem to shoot on a, on a slope a lot of the time, which uh, has its own challenges. Up the hill, down the hill, up the hill, down the hill, round the hill, down the, down the hill, off the hill. Uh, but it was fun at the same time. So it's been pretty amazing to watch. Uh, and they've been troopers, and they've just sort of powered through it. 
it's been a pretty fantastic uh, process, uh, both in terms of the challenge for the actors and in terms of the challenge for the filmmakers. There's 24 hours of daylight. <laughs> that, that, that changes people to a, to a lesser or a greater degree. My fondest memory of this film will be getting on the aircraft and going home. <laughs>